All right, I am here uh, with Anne Hathaway and with her director, uh, Kate Barker Foyland, and their film Song One, which is premiering here at Sundance. Uh, I did a little IMDb research. Did you guys meet on Devil Wears Prada? Yeah, we did. Yeah. I love that. You were working as just a PA or? I was David Frankel's assistant, who was the director. Yeah. That's so cool. And did you always know that you wanted to eventually direct your own movie? Yeah, I had a good feeling about it from when I was younger. Um, I grew up watching a lot of movies, um, a lot of European movies, and um, yeah, I always have wanted to be a director. Cool. All right. Well, Anne, tell me a little bit about this. You're a character that, um, young woman, you come back because there's a family tragedy happening mm -hmm. and you try to reconnect with everybody, and in that you meet someone. Yeah. Well, at the beginning of the film, my character, Franny, um, she's very much estranged from her own life. Um, Kate and I spent a lot of time working out the backstory of the character, and not a lot of it's in the film, but I'll let you in on yeah, it okay, right now. Please. Um, we decided that my character's father passed when she was 15 years old, and she, and that was sort of the most emotionally traumatic thing that's ever happened to her, and a part of her shut down when she was 15. And um, she never kind of went through the self-discovery process that you get to go through at that age and lose yourself and she's always been very much on a path and on a path full of responsibility on a path I guess you could describe it as a Bay path and um, her brother rejects that path decides to leave college to become a musician and she ha has such an over-the-top reaction to it she flips out and they haven't mm -hmm. spoken in six months and the movie opens with him being hit by a car going to a coma and then she has to come home to a life that she'd rejected, but in the instant that she finds out that he's not well, um, she realizes that she's been on the wrong side of the equation for 15 mm -hmm. years mm -hmm. and it's time to make a change. Mm -hmm. And then during that process, which is, you know, horrible, coming home and, and, and this person that you willfully put distance between the two of you, now you're next to them and there's still distance there and there's nothing you can do about it, somehow, uh, a wonderful person comes into her mm -hmm. life in that moment, and they each grow. And it's all about the music, right? Uh, yeah. A lot of it, and in Brooklyn, and it's happening now, right? I mean, this is, is the music scene in Brooklyn, and how important was that for you? Where, where did that um, come from? Music, that well, I live in Williamsburg in Brooklyn, so I wanted to shoot in a lot of, my dream was to shoot in a lot of the places that I like to go to listen to music. Um, and music is so key in the movie. I mean, it's really, um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of music in it, and um, I wanted to shoot all of the performances live um, and record all of the sound live, because I really wanted to capture what it's like to go to these shows. Um, and also, you know, as I was rewriting, um, and as I, as I was writing the script, I was listening to a lot of music to kind of guide, guide me emotionally, because, um, and every song that's in the film is in a very specific place, you know. Um, yeah. So you have, um, as obviously I've always followed your career. Um, you were my our, first interview. I know, your first interview. I think you were at home, right? I was, like, I was in my dorm room your at dorm room. Vassar. Yeah, it's crazy. I was so scared, my God. <laughs> I think you did all right. We did all right. Look, I don't know. We, I read it back the other day. I sound really pretentious, which I ha which I am very good at sounding pretentious. <laughs> like now. It's like now. You feel like <laughs> well, it's it's interesting. I love your career choices because you have made um, you know big commercial movies. Obviously, uh, was what you kind of started in, and then Rachel getting married. You got an Oscar nomination mm -hmm. for that. Then you won the Oscar um, for a big, huge, giant enormous movie yeah. uh, and now you're back here mm -hmm. uh, with a little small film at, at Sundance so for you how um, how do you make your choices is it just the character or is it something you um, decide I'm gonna do an independent now and a commercial and no now the si size is the size of the film is uh, I mean, I think it probably matters more to my representatives than yeah. it does to me. I just, I like to be a part of, of yeah. the stories that I believe in. Yeah. Uh, Kate, do you know where she keeps her Oscar? <laughs> well, we were just talking about that, someone, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Someone, we weren't talking about it. Someone asked yeah. a question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just we don't see her. No, no, no. <laughs> where is it? So I'll let you. Oh, okay. I yeah. just keep it on a bookshelf. Um, you do. I found a spot in my house where um, it's, it's it, like, if, 
if you're standing right in front of it, you see it, but otherwise it's invisible. It's just there, kind of, okay. So you yeah. don't stare right at it. <laughs> um, it's exciting, too. Have you seen Chris Nolan up here? He got the... Um, I saw, he got the Slam Dance yeah. like, Lifetime it's Achievement great. Award. It's awesome. I think it's so cool. Have you seen that film, Following? Mm -mm. You really should see it. It's an amazing movie and, and really inspiring when you think about how hard it is to make a film. He, you know, didn't have any financing at all. He made it with friends over weekends, over the course of a year, and it's such a good thriller mm -hmm. and well, it's it's really it's anyway yeah it's I know and you've worked <laughs> with him like to, you just finished working just with him for the, the second, second time any one thing you can tell um, us about working with him that we wouldn't already know is he just Einstein is everything he's funnier than you would expect he um, I wouldn't say goofy definitely not goofy no I'm never gonna say that but he um, he's a lot easier to to talk to uh, once once you get over your initial intimidation, and you maybe you don't ever completely get over it, but um, but he loves comedies, um, and so it's easy to talk to him about those. Okay, you guys are done. Okay, I can't wait to see. It was great. So can start, I can start breathing again. Yeah, you can breathe. <laughs>